All right. Hello. <laughs> I thought you were saying something. All right, let's get started. Sorry, guys. There's like a lot of technical setup to this. Like uh, over like the past year, I've gotten really good. I, I'm, I got my wireless mic. We're, we're, <laughs> we're live on Facebook right now with the crew at the Alliance. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I love doing this class, especially on Fridays, because I like to call this Freedom Fridays, right? This is where we're going to talk about building wealth. Okay, this is literally my favorite subject in life is this because I think it solves most of our problems, <laughs> right? Or some people don't even know they got a problem with this, right? And that's why I really like talking about this subject. So let me ask you guys, what are some of the like beliefs that you've heard about money? Don't grow on trees? <laughs> well, depends. Um, okay, what else? Money, money can't fix problems. What else? More money, more problems. <laughs> Money doesn't buy happiness. Money, money's, money's the root of all evil. All these different things. How about, you know, money's not the most important thing. Well, that's true, but it's pretty fucking important, <laughs> right? I mean, it's like breathing and then this, right? So you hear all, all these things. And unfortunately, as we grow up, nobody really talks to us about this kind of stuff, right? That's why I'm so passionate about it. I really believe that the, the minute a, a child can comprehend you should start teaching wealth principles. They're just principles, right? I'm not standing here because I'm a multimillionaire yet, right? But I know from studying enough multimillionaires, from knowing them personally, from reading enough books, that the principles are the principles are the principles. And the sooner you start with your wealth principles, the sooner you're gonna be wealthy, right? So why, why do you think that's important? Well, you have people say, well, money's not the most important thing, right? But ask that same person, what they would rather be doing right now than maybe listening to my ass, right? What are they gonna, what are they gonna tell you? What would they rather be doing? <laughs> Drinking, right? What else? I mean, that's, that's a little shallow, but <laughs> give me some more. Anybody got family or anything? Like Jesus, all right? You, you would be spending, maybe spending some time with your family, right? So all these people that think that it's not important spend 40, 50, 60 hours a week at a place they can't stand to get what? It's so crazy how we think about this because we've been led to believe that money is evil, money is not the most, no, it isn't, but our entire system runs on it, okay? You wanna get something to eat today? Better have some money. You know, we're not trading, I'm not trading you a goat so you can give me a cow. Like we're done with the barter system now. Right. The whole system runs on this stuff, but nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about wealth. And when I talk about this, I want you to know that I, I believe that there's a different concept between getting rich and becoming wealthy. OK, so I love this. There's this comedian name. I think his name is Tommy Chen. He used to be on um, The Daily Show and he had this special and he was saying how the Chinese. Right. How much they talk about getting rich, like the Chinese are like obsessed with getting rich. Matter of fact, under the Chinese New Year, the saying that they say to each other is not Happy New Year. It's hope you get rich. Hope you get rich, right? So when I heard that, I was like, oh, I love that. You know why? Because I think that about people all the time. When I see a, a person's gonna have another baby, I say, hope you get rich, right? When you're barely making ends meet and you decide to get a dog, hope you get rich, right? I don't get it, right? They don't understanding that at some point you're gonna have to get out of this trap, right? So I'm not gonna talk to you about getting rich. I'm gonna talk to you about becoming wealthy, okay? So let's see if this works. I believe anybody can get rich, but only if you become wealthy. Why is that? Because I believe that any asshole can get rich, right? You can hit the lottery, you can get rich. Let me ask you something, what happens to most people after they win the lottery? That's because they got broke principles. Anybody can get rich. Your daddy can give you a bunch of money, all that kind of stuff. But if you don't have these principles, you're gonna lose that money. You don't have what it takes to become wealthy. Okay, and becoming, I say become wealthy because you have to become somebody different. You have to, you have to change fundamentally the way you think about things because our society is not teaching you those things, 
right? So what's the most important thing about becoming wealthy? Is this just not ever going to work or what? Right? I say I was good at it. So they had some. All right, it'll work eventually. You guys ever heard this story? Okay. What's this story about? Somebody tell me. Slow and steady runs the race. What else? Assumptions get you killed, Jesus. Um, okay. No, but you're right. You know, you're, it's that kind of slow and steady wins the race. I always had a problem with this story. When I used to hear the story, I'd be like, it doesn't make sense. Rabbits are fast. They're going to finish first, whatever the case may be. And I thought that this story was about speed. It's not a story about speed. Okay. It's a story about the long game. Okay. The long game is what this entire thing is about the long game this is why people don't become wealthy because this shit is hard it's hard to do things now that pay off later it's hard to do things now that pay off later okay i i liken it to smoking cigarettes right here's the deal if you got cancer on day two nobody would smoke cigarettes but killing yourself with cigarettes is a long game. You ain't going to die day two. You ain't going to die day four. You ain't going to die day seven. You might not die year five. You might not die year 10. It's going to be 20 years down the road when the cancer hits. Okay? That's why. And it's hard. It's hard to think right now about things that aren't going to happen 20 years from now, but that's why people don't become wealthy. Because you think you might be thinking five years is a long time or 10 years in a long time. I could tell you 20 years from now, you would have wished you started today. That's a long time. You gotta start now when you understand the principles. Once you understand, cause I can tell you this, after this is not my, like if you didn't know how people get wealthy, if you didn't understand the long game, you're gonna understand it today. And after that, it's not my responsibility anymore, it's yours. So if you keep doing the same stuff, right? Looking for short money and hoping one day you're gonna get long money, it's not going to happen for you. It's just not. So I want to start talking to you guys about the difference between an agent and an owner and how you think, because it is the difference between short game and long game. It's everything. Everything you want that's good, that is lasting, is long game based. All of it. You want to get in shape? Long game. Right? You want to stay in shape? Long game. Right? You work out all the time. I see your posts. Right? <laughs> Can't like them, I'll get in trouble, but, um, but, uh, but it's long game, right? She's working out every day, and right? And she, I don't know where she was before in her goals, but I can tell you she didn't work out one day and hit her goal the next day, right? It's the long, long game, okay? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Let me see real quick if I can figure out how to make this, um, because it would make my life way easier if I could. And it was working before. OK. So I want to go forward. So it goes backwards, but not forwards, unless there's this button or something that I got to press. No? Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's reverse the slides. What could that be? Why would it go forward and not backwards? Whoop. Okay, let's just, we'll just go along with it. Oh, okay, went forward. Okay, great. We're back. Okay, so agent versus, versus owner, what's the difference? So if you had to guess, what do you think a difference would be from an agent and an owner. You can raise your hand, just shout it out when you know. That's a great, that's a great answer. And, 
maybe. Or, or building something for the long game, right? And, and, and for their future, rather than, I mean, than uh, maybe interest in somebody else. So let's, let's talk about what an agent, to me, an agent uh, profile is. So number one, they play the short term, the, the short game. No long-term plan, right? There's no plan. Like they just get in the game and they're like, oh, I got a real estate license. I'm going to go do deals, but never quite think about what they want their future to look like. And understanding that a lot of times people get in the real estate, they think it's easy or that you get to have your own, you know, you get to work your own hours. And it's just like, and you know, you see your friend Stacy, she looks like she's, she's a realtor. She's taking selfies and vacation all the time. Guess when her boyfriend got money? Because I can tell you right now that this is a 24 seven game, right? So unless she's crushing it, you know, most likely she's doing one or two or three transactions a year and she on somebody else's dime going over to Cabo, right? So you have to have a long-term why. For some of you guys, it's your family. You know, for me, you know, it is my family in a sense. I don't have kids or anything like that. But to me, it's like this. I don't ever want to get to the point where I have to choose between I got to go here and pay for my mother's medical bills or whatever the case may be. That's my why. My why is I want that freedom to do, to provide for my friends. And I was telling Justin earlier, is like, Dude, we all have the same goal. Like, you don't have to write down your goals for me. All of you want to live life on your own terms. All of you do. You want to do what you want to do, when you want to do it, with who you want to do it. You want to help the people you want to help and not actually have to think, how much can I contribute? But be able to say, I got you. Don't worry about that. That's taken care of. We all have that goal. And the only way I know how to get there is through financial freedom. I was telling him, if there's another way, let me know. Because this shit is hard, okay? Because it's the long game, okay? So most agents have no why. They just come in, they start doing transactions. They don't have a bigger plan. They don't fully commit to real estate. They're dabblers, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. I understand some people have jobs and they start that way. But if you don't have a transition plan to get out of that job you're in, you're always going to dabble. And I can tell you that you will not dabble your way to success. You will not dabble your way to success. There's no, I've tried it. <laughs> I've tried it. You're not gonna be successful. You're gonna be okay, maybe. Because the amount of effort, the amount of energy, the amount of passion that you need to be great at something ain't gonna get done through dabbling. The amount of repetition, the amount of immersion that you need. We're here, hey, kudos to you guys. This is Friday, it's two o'clock. You guys could be already at the happy hour, right? You guys could be, but you're saying, hey, look, I'm gonna do this now so I can reach a point in my life where I don't have to do this anymore. I know the principles. Right? So you have, you're not dabbling your way to success. Um, they don't plug in. You know, nothing surprises me more than somebody joining our crew and not being here if they didn't have an appointment. I believe deals over everything. You got a deal going on? Please work your deal. Go show property. Don't. I'll do this class again. But if you're not, why aren't you here? Why aren't you plugging in? Okay. And I love this one because I've seen this one a million times, right? They like to blame everybody else. They got, they got excuses for everything that's going wrong in their lives. And not one of them is them. That's my favorite. I, I was talking to Asia. I actually met with an agent in Puerto Rico. She's not with us yet. But I was talking with her and she had gone through a rough time in her real estate career and um, was telling me, you know, well, this lady screwed me over. And, and you know, I'm just sick around and hanging people who take advantage of me and I just got to eliminate people and I have to do this. And it was like all these problems. Right. And I said, out of curiosity, what do you think that, that this is all happened? Why did you end up being around all those types of people that are taking advantage of you and doing all these things? And her answer was like, well, that's the industry. I was like, okay. You know, so I was like, well, tell, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, people are like this. You have to step on people to get over. And I was like, I was like, I got to stop you right there. I said, you got a lot of shitty stories. You really do. I said, and unless you get rid of those shitty stories, you're going to get, keep getting the same thing. It's the industry. I'm in the industry. You like me, don't you? I was like, you're like Amanda, right? She's one of your best people in the industry. It can't be the industry. I go, it's what you believe. You can choose. I go, nobody did anything to you. That lady did not screw you over. You decided to stay where you were at. You decided to work with that person. You decided to be around those people and make those choices. If you don't take responsibility for the things that you're doing, you are completely out of control. That's what I love about this. It's tough. It's a long game, right? It's tough. 
but you got to take responsibility for things. You got to own it. Hey, if it's not going the way that I want to, what can I do to change it? Because you ain't going to change the industry. You're always going to be driven by this and that. It was my boyfriend. It was my husband. It was, it was my wife. It was this situation. It was, no, no, no. You have the control. It's not your, I always say it's not your fault. Fault and blame are shitty energies. They're shitty energies. It's not your fault. Hey, if you were abused when you were a child, it's not your fault. If you have a shitty parent, it's not your fault. But at some point, it has to become your responsibility because it won't be anybody else's. You won't be able to change the game by hoping that that person changes. And you know most of them won't, okay? Um, acts like a salesperson, not a business owner. Always selling instead of building relationships, right? And as you know, we formed a coaching company called Dead Agent Society. So you're on your way to becoming a dead agent. You really are. You know, 87% of agents are out of the business in the first 18 months, right? They don't have the resources we have. They don't have the coaching we have. They don't have the culture that we have. And even then, still, some won't make it because you have to make a decision because at the end of the day, it is your responsibility. I'm going to give you every tool. I'm going to plug you with the right people. I'm going to sit down with your people. I'm going to explain the opportunity. I'm going to do it all. But at the end of the day, you got to take those actions, right? It's yours. So here's the difference with the owner, right? They know the value of the long game and knows their why, right? They know, I have a big why. This is not where I'm gonna stay. I have other levels. All of you should be aspiring to another level. There is no arriving anywhere. Once you arrive at a place, you should be setting your sights on the next place, right? At some point, maybe I'm not doing real estate, maybe I'm doing, I have some big world impact kind of things, and you should too, because they drive you, right? You wanna be in a position where you can actually change some things. Like, I'm, you know, I, I wanna change some political things. I wanna change some, I wanna change paramour right? Like I have a big, big goals that keep driving, but I know I have to hit these levels in order to get there. It's my big why. Okay. Uh, talks about investing in their business. You know, you'll, you'll know the difference if somebody says, well, how, you know, if, if, you know, how much do I have to invest in leads in order to build my business or how much do they cost again? Agent talks like that. An owner says, I have to invest in my, my bet. Your best investment before you get to that first level of wealth is you. People ask me all the time, I got $5,000. What do you think I should invest it in? You. You're your best investment until you hit a certain point of money, right? Invest in your education. Invest in that seminar. Invest in that club where wealthy people hang out, where commercial developers hang out. Whatever your goal is, I just came from the Citrus Club. I just met a lady that's like commercial financing. She just invited me to an event on Wednesday at the Citrus Club where all these big time multifamily players are gonna be. I pay a dime for that. All I did was show up and hang around high level people, right? And do what you guys know how to do. I know almost all of you personally and you guys all have an incredible personality. You all have an incredible energy. There's nobody in this room right now that either I hadn't hung out with at some point in a part, right? Or would. You guys have a magic. You have a magic to just connect with anybody you meet on the street, but put yourself around higher level circles so you can beat some people who can influence, who can move big pieces for you. Rather than they give you one deal, there's people out there that can give you a lot of deals. Actually, I'm a lawyer. I, I deal with divorces and stuff. I need a good agent to dispose of property. I would love to be that person for you. Not suddenly you're getting three to five deals from like legit deals a month. Think a little bit bigger, guys, as an owner. Uh, has a hunger for learning their craft and the company and opportunity you're part of. I'm always surprised. I always tell people, you're misusing me if you're using me as Google, right? I like, you want my help on a deal? First, let's have a deal. Let's talk about the people. I'll help you with strategy. Let's get a deal done. But if you're like, where do I find my ad edit class at Aura? Dude, you, you, you wasted a call with me. Like you should have done the research, right? This is big. You got to have a hunger for learning your craft, a thirst for knowing more. That's why I don't mind if you guys take some deals at the beginning that might be a pain in the butt, as long as you're going to learn something, right? I took a small lease deal when I first started doing commercial. Deal literally paid me $140 when I got done with it. It was like a thousand square foot commercial lease deal, but I had never done one. So I was like, dude, I want to know what it feels like to walk and meet a commercial leasing agent. 
I just want to know what that feel, what is that like, so I can get that rep. So the next time I walk in a little bit more like, yeah, it's just a person, right? The first time you're like, I hope I know what to say, what to ask, you know, but I still showed up, right? So it's a difference. Understand the power of repetition. I just mentioned it. Repetition, and this was one of the hardest things for me to learn because I, you know, as most of you guys know, I like to have fun. I'm a, I'm a fun guy. Like, if it's boring, I want to do it. And repetitions aren't fun most of the time unless you realize their value, right? Because now, because once you start working out, right, when you first start working out, it's uncomfortable, right? And, and you're like, dang, I got to do this every week, every day, all this stuff. But then when you start seeing results, now you now you be standing in front of that mirror like <laughs> all fucking day. Nobody's that I swear I talk to myself a lot if you haven't. Said, I'll be like, I'll be, I'll be in a, tonight, I'll go to the gym in my building and I'll be like, nobody's here, good. I you guys are partying, good. Not me. I'm gonna get my fucking reps in. <laughs> right? I always loved that. I got that from uh, anybody a boxing fan. Don't matter. Uh, apparently not. Uh, so, but you guys know who Mayweather is, right? Floyd Mayweather. Great, great. So, so Floyd Mayweather, I always w remember watching this. There was a, uh, there used to be a show called 24 seven. It was like the three days prior to a fight. They would basically do a documentary on, you know, how they train. It's like the week before the fight. And Mayweather had this habit of going to the gym at odd times, like two in the morning, four, you know, like three in the morning, whatever. And they're like, why, are you, why do you do that? Like, why do you just go to the gym at crazy time? He goes, because I know when I'm in here, the other guys are sleeping. And it, there's, a, there's a power that comes in that. Who's willing to work out at two in the morning? I am. I don't see nobody here but me, right? So the repetitions, it's very valuable. Um, sees the value of becoming a leader that creates leaders. I mean, one thing I, gotta, I, I really have to give kudos to Gil Ramos for is Gil Ramos is a master at empowering people, right? Giving you the opportunity to figure it out. Giving you the opportunity to go out there and take an action, even when you don't know what you're doing, right? That's why he, he loves it. He just loves them. But you know what? If you're an owner, you step up, right? You say, you know what? It's uncomfortable. I don't know exactly how it's going to go down, but I'm just going to do it anyway. And you build that armor for that. Then nothing starts to scare you anymore. You're like, I'm just going to do it. Like... Who cares if I know exactly how it turns out? It's always going to turn out in my favor one way or the other, right? And then, and then in this model, we're going to, is everybody here with us in EXP? Is anybody not with EXP? Oh, yeah, but you've heard about it. Okay, cool. So, so I, I'm just going to talk. I mean, part of why you want to create other leaders is because you're not going to build wealth unless you duplicate yourself, Right? You cannot keep trading hours for dollars and get wealthy. You're not going to be able to do it by yourself. It's only 24 hours a day. There's only so much you can work. And God forbid something happens to you and you can't work. So you have to learn to duplicate. You have to empower others to become leaders. If you're going to build an organization in EXP, you have a responsibility to get agents producing in that income stream, which we'll talk about. And you have a responsibility to make sure that they become leaders, people who can actually attract other people who can build an organization, who see the value of building a residual income source. And then obviously studies wealth building. And that's one thing that I've, I've studied for a while because I was like, dude, it's too important, right? I mean, think about, like I said, it, it doesn't, the pain doesn't hit till later. And this is why it sucks, right? A lot of our parents are going to end up with more life than money. And it's going to be you who needs to have the plan because they don't have the time that you, you have right now to do it. And that's, that's always been my concern with my parents is like, what what is going to happen? Yeah, yeah, they're still, you know, my parents are older. They're still going to get a little social security and all that shit. But that shit, you know, when, when you get sick, that ain't going to get you, right? So you got to study wealth building, the principles, okay? So I heard this phrase, like, remember this, because I think that this is part of the reason that people have certain beliefs about money. Okay, well, first of all, we're taught this, like, money's evil, blah, 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 blah. Okay, money's just a tool. Money's an enhancer of who you are. If you're an asshole now, you're going to be a bigger asshole with money. <laughs> but if you are a great person, right, if you have a great heart, when you have money, you're going to do stuff like Bill Gates and Melinda Gates do with the Bill Gates Foundation, giving away 90% of everything they've ever made to make good things happen in the world, right? So there's nothing wrong with the tool of money, 
right? But here's what I heard this guy. So there's a guy at one of the Tony Robbins events who works with Tony Robbins, and he says, wealth is not about what you can buy. Because he had this really nice watch. He's like, a lot of people are like, oh, you have all these nice watches. He's like, yeah, I like nice watches. Like, I got the money to buy them now. Like, I want, wa I like watches. I collect them. I love them. And he's like, but when people are like, oh, man, you got this, all this money now, buying all those nice watches. And it's like, you know, this watch is not about the watch. It's about who I had to become to be able to buy this watch. Because you have to become somebody different than the way you're thinking right now, okay? So to become wealthy, what do you think your goal when it comes to money should be? What's the goal, okay? Just on a basic wealth principle. If you're trying to become wealthy, what do you want your money to do? That's right. You're trying to get money to eventually do the work for you. Because money, work money works 24-7. Right? Those are your employees now. Right? You want to get to that point. That's the basic principle of wealth is to build up enough of a, of a uh, amount of money where your money makes money on interest. Right? And you don't have to do risky investments. Well, you can do all sorts of investments. Right? You can invest in stock. You can flip properties. You can do all that stuff. But at some point, if you are to build an, a critical mass of money, Right, whatever that is, if you say, hey, I wanna make $100,000 a year, you can do those calculations and understand that if I get my money, if I build two and a half million dollars into an investment account, I'm gonna be making $100,000, $150,000 a year, whatever it is, right? My number, when I did this in the Tony Robbins event, I want, it, they, get, they did this whole kind of chart, and you should have it too, right? Where you list out everything that your goals are, how much money does it cost? Not, you know, first just to cover your expenses and everything so you can live normal. Then what else? Let's dream build. Like, what else would you want to do? Oh, I want to buy my parents a house. Okay, great. Okay, how much does that cost? Cool. And you keep adding up the numbers. Like, I'm a single guy. I'm not married. I don't have kids. Like, my number was like 330000 a year. Like, I could do everything that I want. Like, we're going to go on. We're going we're gonna to rent yachts and have a great time. We're going to take trips. You know, mom's all right. Dad's all right. Sister's all right. 330. So my number ended up being in an investment account, a compounding account that was safe, right? Not one of these risky kind of things, just 7% compounding. I got to get $5.4 million in that account. Okay, once I get 5.4, I got $330,000 being made by the money. Okay, that's where you want to be. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm just telling you, I've studied it, and you, you guys... Um, you guys guessed it right. You want to have your money make money, right? And I'll tell you, I'll show you a book that Tony Robbins wrote called Unshakable that'll kind of give you a little bit more of insight as to, um, you know, investment accounts and financial advisors and what you need, okay? Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But at the end of the day, this is what you want. You want your money to make money, okay? So what are the four steps to building wealth? And by the way, we're going to talk about the EXP model at the end of this. I do this class this way because if you don't understand this part, you're just going to be an agent at EXP. And you're going to miss the boat. You're going to miss the opportunity. Because as I was telling him, this is like, like, think about if you were like early investor in Amazon. Like when they were like, hey, we're going to do books online. Everybody's like, fuck, nobody's doing that. Like nobody's going to do that. And then suddenly Barnes and Noble starts closing, such and so. I don't remember the other stores that were, it was like the books a million, like done, done. And then the whole industry changed. EXP is doing the same thing. There's no model like this. There's no model like this right now. We're the first ones. We started 11 years ago. Can somebody do replicate us? Probably, but good luck. We got an 11 year head start, you know? Um, so, but I, I, want to, I want to let you guys know that you're not going to go from having no money to being wealthy without having some kind of income engine. So the first thing is, is you are in real estate now. Let's make, you got to become a top producer. We got to earn you some money, right? You got to have an income engine, right? You got to be making money so that you, one, you're not always focusing on surviving. Okay? That's very important. A lot of people don't know that. They're like, well, money's not the most important thing. I'm like, well, yeah, but you're broke all the time. So... Who are you helping besides yourself? Nobody. You can't. You not have the ability to do it. So earn money. So we have that within the real estate game. What do you have to do? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but, you know, get your systems right in real estate. Make the calls. 
Get on a leads team. Whatever it takes for you to start earning at least six figures in this game, which, by the way, is not that hard to do. It's really not. You know, I mean, a deal a month will probably, depending on the size of the deal, might get you to, you know, almost 100 grand, right? Maybe a deal and a half a month. Two deals for sure will get you there. Number two is you can't be an asshole about your money, <laughs> right? So, you know, the funny thing is you got people who make money and then they, find, they, make, they make more money, they find a way to spend it. I mean, I am, I've talked to people that make good money and just indirectly have found out what they have in their savings and been like, oh my God, like you make $500,000 a year as a doctor and you only have 25 grand in your savings account? Like, what the fuck are you doing, <laughs> right? Oh, well, you know, you got the nice house, you got the boats, you know, oh, that's cool. But when this gig is up, what do you got for real? So be smart, delayed gratification. It's not time to floss yet. And some of you can. Some of you can get a fancier car and get a higher payment if you want, but why? Is that making you money? Is, hey, there's gonna be a time if you listen to these principles where you can have as many cars as you want. But it's the long game. It's delayed gratification. It's hard. It's hard to watch other people, oh, I'm gonna do this and that, and you say, nah, I don't need a new car. I'm good. Or, hey, my house is just fine for right now. Rather than getting myself a nice, nicer house, maybe I'll buy an investment property instead. It's a different decision. You got to become somebody different, okay? Um, number three, you have to invest money, and you can invest money in many different ways, okay? I'm involved in a traditional financial, you know, uh, advisor type of account through the company that Tony Robbins is affiliated with. I've got that. I own property. Real estate's another way to invest, okay? Now I'm part of another group that's investing in um and real estate technology companies and financial technology company. Look, I'm looking at different vehicles because you gotta, you gotta always be looking for that. But be smart. We'll talk a little bit about some of the smart principles of, of investing, right? You don't gamble, right? Because the first rule, who knows what the first rule in investing is? What's the first rule in investing? All close, don't lose money. Don't lose what you already made, right? So you put all the money you've got into one real estate. I would, I'd be like, stop, 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 stop. You're going to put everything you've got into one bucket. That's a terrible investment strategy. <laughs> okay. And then finally have the money work for you, which we talked about. So this is the book I was talking about. Uh, take a picture if you like. It's, it's called Unshakable. It's, the, it's kind of the shorter, smaller version of another book he wrote called Money Master the Game. Now, I want you to know it's not Tony Robbins pretending to be a financial advisor. He's an interviewing the top finance guys in the world. Not the good ones, the best. The guys who have like not lost money in the last 25 years. Both are the same. This is just, a, I'm giving you this, trust me, I'm doing you a favor. The, the, the first book is this fucking thing. I read the whole thing, okay? This says the same thing this month. So he just kind of, he just kind of shortened it up. But the principles are the same, right? So he interviewed all of these guys and said, what would you do? I'll give you kind of a, um, a short version of what I've learned. So one thing about stocks and things like that, they're hard to understand. It's a hard vehicle to understand. But there's a smart way to invest in the stock game. You've always heard that you do what with your portfolio? You diversify. That is a great strategy. That's why I said you don't put all the money you got into that one real estate investment, because if it goes wrong, you're wiped out, okay? Now, so, but the cool thing that I learned from this, that, that in talking to the best, they said, well, here's the thing, this is the mistake. So he says, well, people diversified their portfolio, and then when the crash happened in 2007, 2008, people still lost half their wealth. How did that happen, okay? And this book, when I read it, it was the first time that I was like, ah, I get it. Okay, so what he said was, is yes, you diversify, right? So let's say you have 100 grand, okay? You have 10 buckets you can diversify in. Okay, most people, what they would do is they'll say, well, I'll put 10 grand in every bucket. But here's the deal. Every bucket has a different level of risk, okay? So you can't put 10 grand in every bucket. You're gonna put 12 in this bucket. You're gonna put four in this bucket. You're gonna put seven in this bucket. 
according, you diversify across buckets and risk. And then what it happens is, is as markets go up and down, right? Some things are meant to go up when the market's down and some things are meant to go. So it keeps you in this kind of steady kind of growth in that, that percentage range. And then when anything gets lopsided, you rebalance. Right. Right. Right, and the same, even in the same industry, like you said, right. You can put all your money into, you know, I don't know, like, right, or, or retail stores and then a pandemic hits, bam, right? So you diversify across buckets, but also across risk, and then you rebalance when anything gets out of whack, right? So if something does really, really well, you take, cut the money off the top, rebalance the portfolio, right? And that's, I, when, I, when I understood that concept, I was like, nah, that shit makes sense. And that's how you protect yourself from losing money. You never, you never, even when you lose, you lose very little, right? So important to read these books. So one thing that Tony Robbins always says is income is the only outcome, right? So you need that income engine. You need something making you income consistently every month, okay? So there's two main types of income. There's earned income and there's passive income. Okay, earned income is what we're doing through the transactions, right? You, you work, you get deals, and you need that. You need that to start. But obviously, your goal should be at some point to get passive income. And you can get passive income in several different ways. And passive income, so you know, is money while you sleep, right? We've got somebody in the office right now, single mom, who's making her January residual income, passive income check was $6,000, I mean, wouldn't it be great to just wake up one day and just be like, oh shit, six grand just popped into my account. And I didn't do a deal. I didn't do nothing. That's passive income, okay? So here's the trick. You want to turn earned income and you need assets, right? So take the money that you make and you invest it to get assets that produce you income, right? And then they produce you passive income. So a great example of this would be buying an apartment building, buying a duplex, right? You take the money that you earn from doing real estate. You got enough to put a down payment on a duplex. You buy the duplex. Now the duplex is making you a couple thousand dollars a month in rental. You've just turned earned income into an asset into passive income. Is that, these are the principles. They're always going to be the principles. Okay. So I'm going to show you how you can take advantage of this through eXp. Okay. Most of you are in EXP, but a lot of people that are EXP don't understand the opportunity. And that's why I went through a lot of the wealth stuff. Because if you're not thinking that way, then it's just another real estate company to you, right? I was, when I saw this, I was already in them. So I've been trying to get rich for 20 fucking years, right? But I didn't, I was trying to get rich in my 20s and started becoming wealthy. That's the mistake I made. And you know what? When the market crashed, I got my freaking house and car taken, <laughs> you know? because I was trying to get rich. I wasn't building the principles. I wasn't doing the things that might pay off in 10. I was hoping to do it in two, right? And when you do that, you skip steps and then you get your ass hit. You take gambles, you lose money, right? That one person told you about that one thing, that one investment, and you go hard at it and then it blows up in your face because you don't know what you're doing, okay? So let me show you how the owners take advantage of, of EXP to become wealthy, okay? So create massive, so first, the thing you want to do is create massive earned income, okay? So you have, once again, you have to have that hunger to become a true professional. Uh, you get to that point where you can't stand not knowing. If you don't know something, research it, right? If you don't know something, research it. Like, I, once, I don't know what's happened. When I got here, there wasn't a mentorship program. Like, there was just people around the office I would ask questions. But when I didn't know, I was researching. I was making phone calls to people, people I knew. I was calling Aura. I was calling whoever, MLS. I was calling listing agents. I want the answer. Even, I don't feel dumb. I want to get smart, right? I'm going to ask questions. People are your product, not real estate. The more connections you make, the more money you make. Become a master connector. That's how I've made all of my money in real estate, through people, Right? You can make connections in different ways. We're on a leads team. We make connections. We buy leads. But that's just really to make a connection, right? That's just to make connections fast. But there's connections everywhere. I just made one right before I walked in the rain over here from the Citrus Club. 
I sat there. I had a meeting. No agenda in the meeting, just met with a high-level person. We start talking. A couple business things came up, and I was like, ooh, we can collaborate on that. That's great. And then he looks over the table, and he's like, have you met Candace? She does commercial financing. I'm like, he's like, Candace, will you come over here? And Candace came over, and we talked for another five minutes. And Candace is like, oh, you guys are doing this? I'm like, yeah, we have commercial property in Paramore. We're doing this. We're doing that. She's like, you know who you need to meet? Hugh Jones or some guy. She's like, he's going to be at the event that I'm doing next one. I'll absolutely be there. I always show, I show up because I know that it's the craziest thing. If you guys really believe in this connection thing, the right people come to you. I mean, it's the craziest thing. In a room full of people, if you're the one I'm supposed to talk to, I will end up talking to you. Or you'll end up coming to me. I, it's the weirdest thing. Like when you walk into the room with that energy of connection and adding value. It's the, and this is, you want to create great massive income? Start connecting with more people. Start connecting with more high-level people. You, you, need, you have a whole business built by coaching the kids, right? Baseball, is it? Okay. Coaches, kids, they got parents. Everybody needs real estate. Then he knows a bunch of cops. Cops are a very tight-knit community. Once you do a couple of deals for cops, you got the entire force. Okay, I did it one time with strippers, but it was different. <laughs> but it was the same. It was by happenstance, but they connect you to everybody, right? <laughs> it's actually true. When I started in a mortgage business, I ended up getting a, a deal, the stripper, and then they, they connected me to everybody else. So I was like, I didn't even know this was a niche. <laughs> what did you tell me, right? All these things can, can be a niche, right? All right. Cultivate relationship by adding value. How can you help? So this is where everybody makes the big mistake and either getting uh, clients or attracting agents is the first thing you should think about is how can I add value to this person? How do I build a relationship with this person before I start spewing EXP nonsense to them, right? That's why we say the first rule of EXP is we don't talk about EXP, right? You need to ask people their story, find out what they're, what's important to them. Find out why they're doing what they're doing. Why do they love the place where they're at? Why do they hate the place where they're at? What are your goals for 2021? What are your 10-year goals down? I want to know it all. I want to know where you're from. I don't know what you like. All that kind of stuff before I can start talking about anything that I'm about. Let them ask you. You ask questions, okay? Um, creativity equals cash. Try things. Be an innovator, right? I've already given him, I guarantee you, if he executes on the two things I just told him, he will make a lot of money. But all of you have a little niche somewhere that I don't know about because I don't know enough of your story to know it. But if we talked, I'd be like, you know what you can do because of who you know or what you've been doing, right? I know that. I mean, you're big in the physical. I don't know. if, if that, Is that a side? Do you train people or do you just work out a lot? Uh, work out. Okay. So... Okay, so you play volleyball all the time. So you ha she has a whole volleyball niche, right? I mean, she, same thing with the cops and all that. She can infiltrate that niche. She can be that value add for the volleyball community. She can host her own volleyball events, right? So, hey, guys, not just play volleyball together, but maybe you start hosting dinner parties with your volleyball friends so you can build more relationship with them and tell them to invite a friend too because your product is people. It's not real estate. Real estate sells itself. Everybody in here, I suspect, would like to live in a home. 100% of the room. We, we sell one of the only products that everyone needs. Not everybody needs this camera. Not everybody does this stuff. Not everybody needs that stool. They might not like it. Everybody needs a home. You don't have to sell home. You build relationships, right? And don't wait to be perfect. It will kill you. That's the number one, the number one things I see new agents do. They're yeah, but when I get to this certain point where I know everything and I feel really comfortable, then I'll start letting people know I'm in real estate. Okay, good luck. I hope you don't go broke until that point, right? That's why we built an infrastructure to help you guys close deals, right? To make sure you don't screw it up. That's why we have a mentorship program here. That's why we tell you run the contract. Only thing you can really mess up is your contract. I mean, don't get me, you can mess up other stuff, but I'm just saying legally, don't worry about it. We have a whole crew to support you. But you need to start telling people that you have value to give them, that you have things to show them, that you want to help them buy their first home, that you want to help them invest in properties, that you want to build generational wealth for them through real estate, and that we have a plan for you to do that. 
Guys, you are in the most incredible. And the crazy part about this is, is we're so spoiled, but like everything is going in the favor of Florida right now. Everything. We've got the weather. We've always had that. We were always cool like that, right? We have a great place to live. For the most part, real estate is still for sale here because the prices are still absolutely manageable compared to these other big cities and big states, right? But then, then a pandemic happens. Literally, states are shut down. I saw the meme the other day was the governor of New York, number one uh, uh, realtor in Florida, and it's Governor Cuomo with his mask on, right? Like, they shut the entire city down. All the New Yorkers are like, I'm fucking out of here. And where they come. Okay, not to not to say that you you know well, hey look I don't want pandemics to happen but they're happening and they're happening great for us. We're an essential business, by the way. Another blessing. Nobody stopped working here when when the pandemic hit. We didn't get shut down. We were considered an essential business. Interest rates are at historical lows. I don't know if you understand what historical means. It means of all time. Of all time the lowest they've ever been. You have more buying power than you've ever had in your whole entire life. And so do your clients. You need to tell them, hey, if these interest rates change, you're gonna have to get a cheaper and shittier house. You wanna wait? Oh, by the way, prices seem to be really going up here rather than going down. I know you're waiting for this. I know you're waiting for it, the big crash. I know you're waiting for it, but every indicator of the up north people moving down here and the weather and the prices, nothing to the point where builders, some builders are L Lennar, fuck Lennar, by the way, on their, on, their, on their low product, they're not paying commissions anymore. Yeah, now you, they'd be like, now you'd be like, fuck Lennar. If at first he was like, come on with them. They're paying 2% on their other products. So 1% less than standard. And they just stopped paying commissions altogether on their lower end product. Because you know why? Because the demand is so dang high. They don't, dang, that's your, <laughs> dang Dean. Uh, the demand is so darn high that they're like, we don't need realtors right now. Let's cut them out. That's how good real estate is in Florida. Let me give you another crappy situation for the rest of the country that I just saw the other day. Yesterday, I believe it was. I took a pic. I was watching news before I got depressed, right? And um, for a second, they showed this map of the United States. You know what's happening right now in the United States? What's happening? Okay. So the map of the United States, almost all of it was this color. There was two places that were this color. One of them takes half your money by just living in that state. And everybody's moving out of there. And guess who else was orange? So, guys, if you don't capitalize now, I mean, I can't. Is there a better time, a better state to be in than right now for you guys to capitalize on the earning the income part? Okay? Get it. And then finally, get into the real estate investing game. Start looking for deals. You know, I have a commercial guy that I work with that he's like, He's one of those guys that kind of plays the borderline and stuff, makes a shit ton of money. But he's like, you know what I do, Bobby? He's like, when I want to buy a deal, I list it. I go get the listing. You know why? Because he gets all the information about the property from the owner, right? He knows the in, inside working game of the deal. So if he likes the deal or it's not going well and he knows he can get a deal, he just talks to his buddy. They, he creates a separate LLC. He's not on the LLC. They have an operating agreement, and they purchase that property at a deal price. Now, I'm not telling you that's the way you do it, but he's thinking, how do I cash in on the industry that I study? I'll give you a great example. One of, I think it was, where's Wendell? Wendell left. I think it was Wendell. So somebody wanted Wendell to list this like cheap ass like residential lot out in, I want to say it was close to Ocala. Mary, Marion, 
It was in Marion County, I want to say. What? It was close to the villages, whatever. Anyway, so usually when you're trying to do comparables on land, it's hard to find a bunch of land that has sold, you know, because not everybody sells land all the time. Man, I went into this to do to help him out with the comp, and I'm like, oh shit, there's a lot of sales in this area. This is weird. And I started looking, and then I found a new construction home that sold for like 250 thousand in that area, and they had paid like seven, like uh, they had paid 21 thousand dollars for the lot. And I was like, something's happening in this area. Like if you were a builder or you wanted to get a deal in this area or you wanted to build a house in this area and flip, I was like, this, this is an area. I didn't even know it. I didn't know that was happening until I helped them with this comp. But you guys are going to run into stuff like that. And you shouldn't think like good for them. You should be like, what about me? How do I get in? How do I get in? Okay. Okay. So. Grab them assets, right? Let me make sure I'm on the I'm on the right screen. <laughs> Obviously, I'm gonna be inappropriate, right? That's me. So here's some different assets that you can get. Okay? Assets, things that make you money. Does a car, if you buy a car, does it make you money? No. It loses you money the minute you drive it off the lot. That's not an asset. Okay? Assets are things that make you money. Okay? So one number one is buy and hold real estate. I just talked to you about that. Guys. If you find a deal, if some of you guys are younger, don't have a place yet, and are looking for a cheap way to live, find a duplex. Live in one side, rent out the other side, live for free. You didn't know you could do that? Find a triplex and make money while living there. Some of you guys are like, I can't live downtown, it's too expensive. Hey, you know, you could buy properties with other people. Right? Some people are over here paying two grand a month for like a freaking studio apartment in downtown Orlando. What if you were able to buy a condo with two other friends and each pay a thousand a month? You're working the game. You're in the game. You understand the game. When I was in the mortgage industry, I was like, oh my God, I learned how to get the money. And that's the first thing you have to figure out is how you can borrow money. Now, those were the wild, wild west before 2008. You know, you just needed a pulse back then. But I was like, holy shit, I could do 100% financing and just claim what I make. That's what we used to be able to do. It's not as easy as that's where the whole market crashed, by the way. Um, and it's not as easy as that anymore. But the fact that you work with lenders and you understand there's programs, you know, there's special programs out there for nurses or whatever that might get you 100% financing. Did you know that if you buy in certain rural areas of town, you can get 100% financing? USDA loans. If you go out on the outskirts of town, you would write that down, USDA loan. I know that got you excited, right? 100% financing. Think about this. Right now, you could go somewhere that's going to be the next. Mount Dora is a great place. Mount Dora is a great place. He's from Mount Dora, so point at him. It's going to be the next. Go find yourself a neighborhood out there. We might have, matter of fact, we went to one in the land with the team. Deland, over by Main Street, Deland. Deland has a, one of the nicest little Main Street areas. You Shops, restaurants, you were there. It was $230,000 for a 3-2, brand new construction. If that's in a USDA area, you can get 100% financing. You know that the, land, that the builder's probably going to pay your closing costs. Plus what? You have, what are you getting? your commission. So you can literally leave the closing table with a check. Your closing costs are paid. You got 100% financing and you're getting 3% in check. Pull that maneuver. Why aren't you look? That's the kind of stuff we want to be looking at, okay? But buy and hold real estate, very, very important. Is this thing working? Okay. So, and this could be commercial, this could be multifamily, this could be whatever, a rental, just get started. Be looking for this kind of stuff, okay? A diversified stock investment account, I already told you about that. Um, read the book, read the book, EXP stock. Okay, I did this class before, it just shut. <laughs> you should have really listened to that when I did that, this class, like, I don't know, a year ago? Because you've seen what the stock can do, right? But I just invested some when the stock split. Again, 
because I'm I believe in the company. I'm gonna be in this company for a long time. And I don't think we're even near what the company is gonna be worth yet. Okay. If I buy stock now. I'm going to go into that. Okay. So we're going to go into how you get free stock, by the way, through EXP. So you're going to understand that game too. Okay. Um, hold on. Building your EXP business in your downline or your organization. Passive income stream. Okay. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. So for those who you're not familiar, a lot of people say, I don't even know what stock is. Okay. It's just taking a percentage ownership in a company, right? Taking a piece of the company. It's just like if we bought a prop, uh, uh, a property together and you put 50 down, I put 50 down, we bought it together, we're 50-50. I own 50% of the property. No, it's just like real estate. You want to buy real estate when it's low and sell when it's high. That's all it is. So when you get a stock at a certain price, right? And as a company grows and as the company gets valued at more, you get equity in the company basically, right? You get more, okay? Some of you guys don't even know um, how you even get free stock in EXP. So you get free stock in this company for doing the normal things you do. This is not stock that you buy. These are gifts from the company. Every year when you close your first deal, you get $200 worth of stock. Okay. So every count, every anniversary year, if I join today, I do my first deal, I get 200. Next year, when I reset, I do my first deal, I get 200, so on and so forth. Every, every, uh, every time you sponsor an agent, bring them into the company and they do their first deal, you get paid $400 in stock, okay? When you cap, when you hit your cap every year, so you know capping is when you hit a certain level of production, in our market about 10 to 12 deals, right? So you start at an 80-20 split, right? But once you hit $80,000 in gross commissions or 16K to the company, the same, that's, it's all the same. It's either EXP makes 16 grand, that's the cap, or you bring in $80,000 in gross because if you take 20% of 80,000, it's 16. Same shit. You get $400 every year you cap in stock, free stock. Company says, thank you. Thank you for being an ambassador of the company. Thank you for being a producer, okay? But this is, this is the jam right here, okay? And this is why you wanna become a great producer, right? If you become an icon agent, meaning you do 20 deals above your cap, so in our market, let's say about 33 deals a year, just ballpark, right? Which many top agents, and this, honestly, the number, the number one recruiting tool for a top agent should be that. Let's figure out when you were in re, your top agent, do 50, 60, 70 deals a year, you've been in Remax for how long? Oh, you've been with them for five years. If you would have been getting $16,000 in free stock every single year for the last five years, you would be a millionaire in stock in EXP right now. What are you getting at your other company? What ownership are you getting in your company? Like, show me, show me what they gave you after 20 years at Remax. A jacket? A pin? I can't, I can't trade that in at the bank, okay? And you guys have all access to this. You guys should be shooting for that every, it's free stock just for doing, just for producing a lot and making money in another way, okay? Stock buy program. So this is something that is a no-brainer. When you signed your agreement to become part of EXP, they're gonna ask you, do you wanna be part of the agent equity program? That means that they will take 5% of your commissions and they will buy stock for you at a 10% discount automatically when you close a deal. So you just start building it over time. You're not even thinking about it. You know, you're just like, you close a the deal, they take a little 5%, they buy some stock at a 10% discount. You just made 10% on your investment, which by the way, most investors would die for by simply just being a part of this program, okay? And then you can buy it on the open market. What was your question again? Yes, and that's in the stock buy program, but they're only gonna take five. Obviously, we don't wanna overbuy the stock with our own people, so they only take 5% of your commission, but at a discount. Now. There's the open market. The open market is like apps like Robinhood. Well, this is ShareWorks, but I'll show you the open market. So we'll talk about that in a second, but you can buy this on your own, just like any other, any other investor would. And I have not enough, but I have bought it on the open market. 
had a guy in New York who we brought in about a year and a half, actually about almost two years ago, a guy named Vince Koo. Vince Koo was a top broker in New York, top exit realty broker in New York, had 300 agents, three offices, and switched with us to be a part of EXP. He's one of your upline. He's a guy you can lean on, by the way, very awesome, awesome guy. But you know what he did that was smart as shit? When he joined the company two years ago, he dropped about 60 Gs into the stock. That was a brilliant decision. He said, look, if I'm going to be a part of this company, I'm going to invest in it like I believe in it. Now, obviously not everybody has 50, 60 grand, but even if you had a grand, you should have put it in that company, in the company. I've, I've turned like my last percentage return on my money when I looked at my Robinhood account was like 878%. I told you most investors killed for 10 because this thing that happened during COVID is, like I said, the whole, all the wind is behind our backs right now. Okay. So just so you know, do you want to know where your stock is? If you've been in the company, you want to know there's a place in the EXP enterprise. It's called ShareWorks by Morgan Stanley. You just click on that button and you can see, yeah, go ahead and click on it. You might have some stuff in there. Sad part is, like I told you, our, like our, our producer, T. Abilis, our top producer, T. Abilis, who like icon agent, makes a, had no clue this was even here. I think Dan Rojas showed her one day, was like, hey, do you know you have like, a shitload of stock with the company. She's like, what are you talking about? Pulled it up one day, it's higher now, but I pulled it up one day, it was like, she's like, oh my God, I have like $200,000 in there. <laughs> That's because it's too, it's too much in there. No, it might be an error too, because they're doing that stock split, I don't know, but, but, but find, it, find it again, it's in there. Okay, and this is what it looks like on the back end. Okay, so it'll show you uh, a couple of things, you know, uh, it'll show you available, meaning available, meaning you can take it out right now. Now, this is old. I, uh, this was when the stock was at 44. Okay, like I didn't put the new one in there because I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be like the guy like I got this. But I mean, I, I have an icon because I coach agents and I, I haven't done the icon, but I will be iconing here in the future. I could tell you that. This is just simply by buying stock and capping and doing all that stuff. But look what, available, this is the 5% at a 10% discount, meaning because I bought it, I can cash it out right this second. This one unavailable means if there's a vesting period because all the gifted stock to you, you have to keep for, you have to be in the company for at least three years to cash it out. That's part of the, that's part of the gift, right? The gift is I'm gonna give you this stock, but you gotta remain with us right? Or you're going to lose it. <laughs> but once three years passes, I could take that 26 out. I could tell you right now, I looked at it this morning. It is um, at least three, four times that because this was when the stock was 44. I haven't even iconed. Imagine if I was iconing. Okay. And then once again, open market. So the most popular app right now everybody talks about is Robinhood. Get yourself a free, free Robinhood account. Just be able to say, Hey, look, if something happens, I can drop a couple hundred dollars on the stock or a couple of things just, you know, cause we're all doing it now. We're all part of the company right now. We want to get assets. I, I told you, I put about, I, I ended up putting about eight, $8,000 in over time. I wasn't like big player, like uh, Vince Koo. I just put what I could at the time and 8,000 turned to over a hundred thousand in the past year. That's crazy to me. Right? And, and we're a baby company. So you still have the opportunity to get upside. It's not done, right? And then you just let it ride, right? This is future investment. This is long game stuff. You try to be a day trader, you're probably gonna get burnt. It's not, I'm not trying to time the market. I'm in it for the what game? The long game. Okay, why would I take that stock out now? It's, worth, it's already worth what it's worth. Let it ride. We're a baby company. We just opened up Puerto Rico. I was just there. We just opened it up. We just opened up India. India is not a small place. Okay. South Africa, all these different places. Okay. So your EXP business, becoming a business owner, you have the opportunity to build a brokerage without the liability or expenses. So, so that's the opportunity. Here's the funny part. What, what time do I got, by the way? I want to make sure I keep you guys too long. 314? Really? That's really good. I'm going through this way faster than I thought. Perfect. Okay, so 
here's the funny part. So I need you guys to understand how to talk to people about this because a lot of people do EXP wrong, right? They go out there, they show the stock. They, I, I saw a meme the other day was like Dave Chappelle hanging out of a limo, like I'm rich, bitch. Like, like it, that's not the way you sell this opportunity. The reality is, is that all they did was switch up the system to make it more profitable for people to do the same things they were doing. Building an organization with an EXP is no different than being a broker. The difference is traditional brokerages have one level models, not seven level models. If I asked you, do you want one income stream or do you want seven? What would you choose every day and twice on Sunday? Seven, right? All EXP did was say, hey, look, what do brokers do? Let me tell you what agents normally do. They become the top producer, right? They work their ass off and then you're gonna get tired. You'd be like, how do I work a little bit less, but still get the same or more? You're going to have a couple of bright ideas. One is I'm going to start a real estate team, which is a good idea if you're with the right people who can show you how to do it right, because it's tough. Okay. But it's a good game. It can build you an income source through running a team. And that's great. And if you build it within the EXP model, even better, because not only are you making money from your team, but you're making money through residuals and that team becomes a engine for qualifying agents, for getting agents to be productive. And once that agent leaves, if they say, hey, look, I want to become my own producer, whatever the case may be, they still have the option to build their own organization, build their own team and get stock in the company. It's like a graduation program. Okay. The other idea you're going to have is I'm going to get my broker's license and I'm going to become a broker. And that's a shitty idea. It really is. Because all you really did was take one extra test to get 100% of liability to Get a to and, and and what do you what do brokers spend time doing? What is the number one job of a broker for themselves? Training. Recruiting. Yeah, you you love it to be training, but most of them don't even know how to train, and they don't add value. Who's been at a broker's before? They just didn't add much value. Okay, that broker had a great idea. He was probably a producer. He said, "I'm going to become a broker now." So I'm gonna take on this liability. Maybe I get an office space. Maybe I get some of my expenses. That sounds all like fun, right? Then I gotta start recruiting agents who are gonna produce for me. You better be a great coach. You better be a great trainer. You better be a great talent scout. And then at the end of the day, all you've really got is a one level model broker and a bunch of agents on one level. So what happens if you recruit 10 agents and let's say the 80-20 rule applies, which it always does. Out of those 10 agents, there's really going to be two that might make you some money. So what happens if they leave? What do you have? You have absolutely nothing. In a seven-level model, it's different. You spend all that time, and if you understand the way the model works, you start investing in those people, getting those people trained, or plugging them into the ecosystem we've already built for you at Alliance. You don't have to do it. I've got a team of coaches. You don't got to coach the person you bring in. I'm going to put him with Andrew Brooks, Eddie Torres, Michael Collier. I got a whole team built for you. These classes are happening every month. Boot camp is next week, and it will be happening next month. All you got to do is meet them and plug them in to this system. So you don't even have to do that in, this, in, our, in our group. You don't have to take care of none of that. But what happens now if you empower that agent and say, you know, you have the opportunity to build a broker just like me. This opportunity is the same for me. It's the same for Gil, same for Rachel. Nothing changes. It's the same opportunity. You want to build 5,000 people in your organization? Go do it. I'd be happy if you did it, right? So, but what happens? You spend all that time recruiting those 10, but if you empower those people and they start recruiting some, oh, wow, now you're getting paid on them. Okay, so now those 10 people each brought two people. That means on your second level, you have how many? If 10 people bring two people, two times 10, you have, you have how many in your second level? 20. Thank you, Devin. Thank you. You have 20. If those 20 each also get two, how much do you have on your third level? 40. So on and so forth. And it compounds. Jay Kinder, who I went and visited in Puerto Rico, is one of our upline. He's making about, his last month's check was $260,000 in residual income. He's got about 3,700 people in his organization. He says, I've never seen something like this. This is a compounding passive income opportunity. I just never seen anything that pays like this. Okay. 
Yeah. I love that one. I love that one. I've seen comments like that. Okay. So, so what, what shape are companies in? All companies. Let me, let me show you. Where's, where's, uh, who's got, oh, dry erase. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you. Broker, agent, agent, agent. Traditionalist, that's traditional brokerage. What shape is this in? It's just a shitty ass pyramid. Cause, cause these people don't have the opportunity to make more than these people. Coca-Cola, what does your organizational chart look like? What, what shape is it in? Giant pyramid. Giant pyramid. It's the you know, president, CEO, you know, board members. You got middle management. All right. And then you've got employees working there. Hey, you're going to work extra hours. We're going to pay you the fucking same. Now, does this employee down here have the opportunity to make as much as this person here? Look at this shape. It's a fucking pyramid. Pyramid is not a problem. They just don't understand the model. They don't understand that they themselves are in a pyramid that doesn't give them the same opportunity. A multi-level, which is what they call a pyramid, right? By the way, pyramid schemes are illegal. By law, illegal, okay? You know what I say to people when they say, oh, that's a pyramid scheme. I was like, hey, have you been over to Pyramid Scheme Arena where the magic play? Have you been to Pyramid Scheme Arena? They're like, what are you talking about? Amway, Amway Arena. What do you think Amway is? It's a multi-level that started years ago before some of you like every were even born. They were selling soaps and shit and lotions. And guess what? Mr. Rich DeVos, you ever heard of the RDV Sportsplex? Rich DeVos, founder of Amway, RDV Sportsplex. He owns all that shit. Okay, so the model isn't the problem. The model pyramid isn't the problem. The problem is people don't understand it. The reason people don't like multi-levels is because multi-levels, and it's never been anything like this. I was explaining to Justin, like they usually have, there's two reasons you don't like, people don't like multi-levels. It's either because of the product or the people who try to sell them the product. That's right. You're always gonna get that in a multi-level. You're always gonna get people who sell the wrong thing. I already told you how to do this right. How to build a relationship first, how to add value. EXP is the best product out there. But here's the difference. Most multi-levels ask you to sell a different product, right? So if one day you're like a CPA, the next day you're selling makeup or shampoo or vitamin. And now I'm a vitamin expert. I'm in herbal life. And now I have to convince you to start using something that you don't currently use and convince you that this is like the best thing that's going to happen for you. Let me tell you the difference in, the, in this, in this uh, EXP model. All they did was attach the power of the multi-level, that compounding power of passive income to what you were already doing. You don't have to sell nothing different. I need you to sell real estate the same way you sold it before. Remember when you used to tell your friends about your cool company? Well, now we're gonna pay you for that. That broker that wanted to start a brokerage because he thought it was a great idea to get liability and bullshit, he's doing the same thing. He's recruiting. What do you think a broker does? Why become a broker if you're not trying to make a little piece off of an organization that you build? It's the same exact thing. And that's why people don't understand the model. The problem is people sell it wrong. People just, ugh. you know, like people, people don't like multi-levels because they start selling vitamins and they won't shut up about it. And they start to sell it to their family and their friends and their friends are like, dude, I want to talk about something else besides the fucking vitamins. Can we just hang out? Right. They do it all wrong. Broken promises. And the other thing they do is they try to sell to the people they already know instead of making new connections. There's people who want this opportunity. There's people who were recommended by a Remax agent who says, you should look into EXP. So not everybody feels the same way about it. 
There's a reason Veronica Figueroa was in this. There's a reason why Chuck Fazio, the largest independent broker of 900 agents, joined EXP about six, seven months ago, right? There's a reason brokers are, so it can't be all bad. It's just people will taint it and that's gonna happen, right? The company doesn't believe in that. They tell them not to do that, but hey, it just happens to be we're doing real good right now. So everybody's on that Kool-Aid. They're putting their stock up and I don't do that. I don't do that at all. You know what I do? I try to add value. Come to a seminar, come to a class, come meet my partner Gil, your top producer. My partner Gil knows how to build a plan that'll get you from 20 deals to 40 deals. Would that be a value to you? I don't even talk about EXP. I find out what people need and I try to add value. That's how you build an organization. And it pays better. Here's the funny part. It pays better than actually owning a commercial property, a multifamily. You could buy a 50 unit complex and it wouldn't pay as good as this does. And you didn't have to pay for the complex. Okay, I posted this the other day online. There was a deal that a commercial uh, agent that I know posted the other day. It was, you guys ever heard of Will's Pub on Mills 50? You like Will's Pub? Okay, well, Bill, Will's Pub was for sale. Okay, the building was. Okay, and this was about a month ago. And I got the listing from the guy, the flyer from the guy. And I was like, oh man, this is a good deal. It was a good return on your investment. It was maybe like a five and a half percent, six percent return on investment, which for commercial right now with the prices is not terrible. Way more than you get at your bank, right? And you have a steady commercial asset in a growing district of Orlando called the Mills 50 district. Okay, the price of the property was $895,000. The net income, what they call NOI, net operating income, which just means to profit every year on that building was $63,000 a year, okay? I posted it. I said, look, the whole point of becoming wealthy is to have passive income and to get income streams. This is one of them. You should consider buying commercial real estate. In this particular case, you're gonna pay $895,000 to buy yourself a $63,000 a year income or salary. That's what you're doing. I said, if you're a real estate agent, I could show you how to do this with zero money out of your pocket. I left it at that. Everybody thought I was talking about helping them buy the building. I don't, you don't give a shit about, most people don't, I, you don't care if it's Will's Pub or not, you cared about the 63,000. Let me show you how to build that without paying $895,000. Well, maybe you should do what that single mother in the office did and simply introduce people to our culture, to our classes, to add some value over a two year period. And her last month's check was $6,000. Multiply that by 12. Somebody give me what that number is. 72, so you're, you're a math person. She's like 72. You're telling me now that she's on track to make more than Will's Pub in a two year period by simply making connections with agents. I've never seen anything that pays like this, guys. And this is the beginning. Once she hits a certain level, it's, that co it's compounding. It just grows on its own while you sleep. You still gotta work it. I'm telling you, this is a five, 10 year long game. I'm just telling you to start now and stay committed, right? Because if not, you're gonna start skipping around. You're gonna start go chasing after shiny objects everywhere. And five years down the road, you're no better than you were before. And if you would have thought back and said, man, if I would have just got in line and stayed in line, I would have been at the front of the line now. So start now, okay? I'm gonna put my clicker on. Oh, I started drawing pyramids. <laughs> That's what happened. Okay, um, so we talked about that. Okay, so we could, I'm debating whether to play this whole video, but this is, do you guys have ever seen this, uh, well, this calculator video? I know Devin has. But this is actually uh, Brent Gove, who's our upline. Brent Gove was making about $600,000 a month. Lives in Puerto Rico, of course, for the tax advantages. Um, he was just here two weeks ago to do a seminar specifically for our group, right? Because he's part of our family. He's part of our family tree, okay? And this was, this was him actually explaining how the, the deal works, right? I'm not going to go through it, but basically he starts going through the levels and telling you how big the numbers can skyrocket. Do you want to see it? I mean, it's up to you guys. It's like uh, six minutes. So we're going to go to e, uh, join.exprealty.com. You can come back here later. It's our company website. 
you come here, there's all kinds of great information about the company. I really include you investor relations, there's a load of stuff. But I'm going to come over here to calculator and click on. The they don't have that calculator anymore because we're publicly traded so and we can't make claims about how much money you're going to make. This is the part you've got to watch. It just blew me away. So we're not a franchise. We're a national company. And according to NAR, the National Association of Realtors, the average agent sells six homes a year. I've been talking about agents who sell eight to ten. We're going to bring it back to agents who just sell six homes a year. What would happen? And then according to NAR, the average sales price coast to coast is 275. The average commission is 2.5, sadly enough. I know I get three and a half in all my listings. Some of you get three, you'll make more. Some of you are a higher sales price. Um, you'll make, I'm like at 475. So, and I sell way more than six and I'm sure a bunch of you too. Again, it'll just be better. I'm dialing this back. I'm being conservative. So let's say the first year, just play along with me here. How many agents could you personally introduce to EXP? Could you do five? I'm going to give you a five-year plan, kind of like a 401k for real estate and an exit strategy. Not that you have to exit real estate, but how would you like not to have to work as hard as you've been working for all these years? So could you introduce five this year? And could you do that each year for five years? If so, in the five years, you will have referred 25 people to EXP. And in my example, I'm going to say, who are average six sales a year at 275 and a two and a half commission. And then how many people do you think those agents get introduced over the next five years? What if they did uh, one a year for five years? That'd be five in a five year period. And then the agents stay till even less, three in a five year period. The agents stay till even less, two in a five year period. Um, that's like one person every two and a half years. I'm really kind of dialing this back. Because you told 25, 20 unlocks level five, and 25 gets you to level six. However, you do not get paid on level seven. You must refer 40. You only did 25, so you're not going to be paid on level six. So you personally met 25 people who are producing at least one deal every six months. But your annual okay. income. And they do six deals total a year. Revenue sharing once you complete the above picture. Now, you're, now people are like, what was the above picture? You personally referred 25 agents to EXP. Now, I did 12 in the first two weeks. It's not hard to do. But 25 people at EXP in the next five years who average six sales a year, and they tell some of their friends, you tell some of their friends, it kind of compounds and accumulates out. Okay, and I would say, ask people, what do you think it'll be? And they're like, well, I don't know, like uh, 80,000 a year, 180,000 a year. And one guy's kind of a math guy, he's, oh, no, 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 it's going to compound. It's closer to 280 over a quarter of a million. Well, here it is, and I promise you, this is not broken. It's $2.1 million a year is your annual income five years from now with the EXP revenue sharing. Once you complete the above picture, which is right here, what is this? Can you refer, if you want to make $2.1 million a year outside of sales, because now you don't, you're not just a salesperson. You're building a real estate company with the EXP, with me, with the person who invited you here. So could you have 25 people? There's 2 million out there. Could you find 25 who average six sales a year, not a month, a year at 275? Could you find those people? But then they tell some people who tell some people who tell some people. I went and did 25 in three and a half months. I already have people that have done five, 10, 15, 20, 23, 24. We haven't even plugged in any of those kind of numbers here. We Again, you did the lion's share of the work. Nobody did anything like this. And there's your income, 2.1 million a year. Now, I was showing this to a friend of mine. He's like, hey, can you change that to 15? I go, sure, why? He goes, well, I'm not as outgoing as you, but I think I can tell three people this year, and if I did that each year for five years, I could refer 15, because I think this is more realistic for me. I'm like, okay. Well, you lose level six, because you take 25, you get level six revenue share. You lose level five, because you have to refer 20. Referring 15 will just give you paid on three levels. He goes, yeah, show me that. This is more me. I think I could do this in five years. I'm like, okay, well, before I do that, you need to know it is nowhere near 2.1 million. And now this is a friend of mine. He's like, I knew it was too good to be true. I knew it. I go, well, don't go crying in your beer because 655,000 a year is not bad. He's like, really? He's like, okay, I'm in. And he actually signed up and he's with me today. Oh, shit. So if you'd like to make 655,000 a year five years from now, you just need to refer 15 agents to each for every six sales a year. Then each of those will start to tell people who tells and then calm down and accumulate out. 
I'll end with this. It shows to another friend up north, the farm county. Can you drop it to 10? I go, you know what? If you have any kind of brokerage, he had 14 agents that worked for him. He, he said, all my agents, they average probably six. And this is actually sadly probably what my agents did, sleepy little farm town. Because I think 10 of them will sign it. He's a kind of a cowboy. Um, he's like a big barrel chesty guy. He goes, I think 10 of them will sign up for that deal. They called it a deal. It's pretty funny. And um, and, he goes, and, and I could see them doing this. He goes, what would this earn? I go, well, you're going to lose level four because you tell 15. You're only going to get paid on two levels. He goes, yeah. What, what? He goes, I could see that happening for sure. Uh, what? And he's a 35-year independent. He goes, what, what would that earn me? i got to be honest with you. I was enormous, nervous to hit the go button. I'm like, what, 30, 40,000 a year? I've never done anything that low. Well, how's a quarter of a million a year? 251,000 a year. Talk about a 401k for real estate. Or you could just not try. Well, I'm just going to stay with my own company and sell my catalog. Really, that's why I love Keller Williams. Because I knew in five years, I'd be 56 years old. I'd be selling my tail off then, just like I am now. I knew my future is predictable. So is yours. You'll be at Coldwell Banker in five years. You'll be at Remax in five years. Maybe you'll be doing luxury home. That's all I got to see. But you, I'm going to explain the system a little bit more in depth here so you can understand it. But I just wanted to see how this kind of compounds. And, and then Brent happened. That was years ago. So that was before Brent was making the kind of money he's now. So the, the picture has proven to be true. Matter of fact, he's making more than 2.1, right? Because he's making half a million a month now. So, you know, every four months, he's hitting the 2 million <laughs> mark, right? So that's the kind of money. So I'm going to teach you this real quick because most people even in the XP don't quite understand how it works. Okay. And by the way, you're going to have to listen to this a couple of times. You should be watching the videos that I'm going to tell you about. You should be going to the conferences. You should understand your product, right? Because it really is that powerful. So as you noticed, you don't have to meet personally that many people. He talked about a five-year plan with 25 people who are producing. Okay. Which is important. They have to be producing. So you have a responsibility to make sure the people you bring in actually succeed in real estate. Okay. A body's not going to unlock a level for you. Okay. But just so you know, you can meet as many people as you want. You can go exponentially wide. There's no cap on that. And you're going to get paid on seven levels of income. Okay? What does that look like? I don't know. What does it look like? And, and don't get smart, right? Um, all right. So here's how it works. Actually, let me... All right, you can go back. This doing again. You can go backwards, not forwards. Okay. Is that? I know, right? It probably did. Actually, you're probably right. Okay. So, 40 wide. You meet 40 people who are producing, right? Or get them producing, right? This is the goal. The goal because 40 unlocks your all your levels. Okay. So I'll go level by level on this. Okay. So. If you get five people producing, you unlock level two. You do 10 people producing, you unlock level three. 15 people, you unlock level four. 20 people, you unlock level five. 25 people, you unlock level six. That's the first example he gave you, 25 people, which you get paid on six levels. That means when this person meets somebody and that person meets somebody and they meet somebody and so on and so forth down to six levels, you're getting paid. In order for you to get paid on seven, you got to go from 25 to 40. And this is actually your highest paying level is number seven. But trust me, there's guys right now in Puerto Rico making half a million dollars a month that don't have 40 in their front line. A lot of people don't because once you hit big enough numbers, getting paid on five levels or six levels makes you a shit ton of money. Now you're leaving a ton of money on the table. <laughs> so you don't want to be that person. You want to over time build systems to connect. So if you're getting to the point where you guys at some point are making $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month in residual income, $30,000 a month, it would be wise to start investing in systems for you to connect with more agents, right? That could be hiring a recruiter. That could be some of the stuff that I'm doing right now. I'm doing a couple programs on LinkedIn that have me connecting with people on LinkedIn. It's just an untapped resource of business professionals. And you can easily find all the realtors on LinkedIn. And guess what? At any moment in time, there's a million realtors looking to switch companies on their own. They were all, they're looking right now. They're in a situation where they want to move their license. They're always moving their licenses. So you want to be in front of them. Okay. 
So where does, I'd say, where does the 20% go? So remember it's an 80-20 split. Remember that? So when you produce, what, what EXP does is, by the way, we're gonna take that 20% that we make until you guys cap, we're gonna take half of it to pay you guys down in residual income. That's where the 20% goes, at least half of it does. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that you go 80-20 and 10% of the 20 that goes to the company goes to pay other agents, the people who brought you in and the people you will be bringing in. Okay, so here's how it works, okay? The most you can make on any person on your first, on your first level is $2,800, okay? That's 3.5% of that cap. 80, remember the cap was $80,000, $80,000 of gross income. So if, that per, if a person on your first level caps, you're going to make max 800 because they can't, they're not going to pay you past their one day cap because they're not, remember, it's 100% commission. There's no more to pay, okay? But that's okay. We, we're making little bits on a lot, okay? So on any one person on your first level, you can make 2,800. Second level, 3,200. It's 4% of the cap. So actually get paid more on your second level. On your third level, it's 2.5% of the cap. So it drops down a little bit on your third level. So the most you can make on a person is 1,200. Uh, I mean, a 2,000 on the fourth level is 1,200, drops down to one and a half. On the fifth level, drops down to one, and then it starts to go up again. Okay, so as you start getting unlocking your later levels, now you're getting paid 2,000 again, two and a half, and here's your biggest paying level, which is your seventh level, where you get paid 5% of the cap. So 5% of $80,000 is $4,000 per person per year. Okay, that's how it works. If you ever somebody ever asks you, how does it work? Take a screenshot of this. This is how it works. Cap is 80K in gross commissions. Let's do them. You can do the math right there. This is the most you can make on any one person. So let me ask you this. Let's say you, you got 10 people personally sign up under you that all capped. Okay? So if 10 people, just 10 people you meet, and they all cap, they're on your first level, how much money would you be making a year? Ten people on your first level, they all capped. Twenty-eight thousand dollars a year. That's somebody's salary right now at some job that they don't like by simply meeting ten people who hit their cap. Now, if you noticed on Brent's example, he gave you half, he gave you six transactions a year. So a half cap, let's say. Right? Because not everybody's a capper. So let's be realistic. I'm gonna give you realistic numbers about this. Not everybody's going to cap. Of course, you get as many deals as they do, right? Because you're getting 3.5% of whatever commissions they bring in, no matter what. I'm just telling you, here's the max you can make off of them a year if they cap. Most people will not be cappers. That's okay, because this is a what game? It's a long game. Two years, Gil and I have gone from about 70 agents to 918 states, and we're growing about 30 to 60 every 30 days. Long game. We're on our way to being Brent Gove. I'm just not there yet. But I'm telling you, that's what your future looks like if you work the game. Jennifer Encarnacion, the single mother I keep talking about, she's on her way, right? Dan Rojas, uh, Sean Romano, Andrew Brooks, power team, they're on their way. Josh and Brittany Pride, on their way, right? They're just working the game. This is the long game. Hey, it doesn't mean you're getting rich now. Maybe you're only making $1,000 a month in passive income, which, by the way, We'll cover, your, we'll cover your car payment, maybe some groceries too, okay? So it's not just about reaching $2 million a year. I'm telling you on the way, you can start making some legitimate money. So, so on and forth, so forth, this is how that game works, okay? So we'll get a little bit. So does that make sense to everybody? So, so let's do another math problem, just based on the cap so that you understand. So let's do, let's do those same 10. Let's say those 10 each get two. So if those 10 each get two, how many people you have on your second level? 20, okay? So you know you made $28,000 on your first deal. Let's say those people only get two. You got 10 because you're a rock star. They only met two people that are producing, each one of those people. So they put 20 people on your second level. 20 times 3,200. 3, how much? 64,000 64, plus what? What do you get? Your first level. No, you said this was 64, right? Plus 28,000. 
$96,000. Are you, are you guys okay with $96,000 in residual income? I mean, I'm not trying to make you Brent Gove, but I mean, can you meet 10 producing people over a five-year period, just 10, and empower them to attract two more people? The difference between that broker that's building that one level is it don't matter. See, in this game, let's say the person you bring in here leaves, but they brought in 10 people, and those 10 people don't leave, you still get paid on the 10 people. That's the difference. That's why this scales. Over here, there's no model like that. Once this person leaves, they gone because you were only getting paid on that one person. But if that person had brought in 10 people on that line, that person can leave and I still get paid on the 10 people on the line. That's why this model is like, I've never, you've never seen anything like it. It's that, it's that powerful, okay? So how do I build my agent attraction business? So people ask me, Bobby, how, what do you do? Number one, you need to make a list. The same way you need to make a list for your clients. One of the first things we'll ask you to do is organize your own database of people, your own personal your family, your friends, your acquaintances, your Facebook friends, your email friends, every friend, and put them on a list for you to get real estate business. Do the same thing with agents. Every time an agent requests me on Facebook, I put them on my list. Every time an agent requests me on Instagram, I put them on the list. Every time I meet an agent out in the world, I get their card, I put them on my list. Every time uh, I do a transaction with an agent, they're on my list. I build a relationship as I'm going along, right? Every time I go to a networking event held by a title company, a lender, whatever the case may be, guess who's in the room? Realtors, who half the room's looking to switch their brokerages right now. I'm a, I just go make friends, right? I make a list and then I make, meet that person, I put them on my list and then I follow up with them and I find ways to add value. I oftentimes am inviting them to a class, whether I teach it or not, I'm inviting them. Hey, because when I was talking to them and getting their story, I realized they're like, oh, I joined this brokerage, but like, there's no training, there's no none. Really? We got training going on all the time in our company. Be my guest. Bring them to our sales meeting. We don't care. The only thing they can't come to is boot camp. Boot camp costs us a lot of money. It's for you guys. Besides that, bring them to a sales meeting. If they're Spanish, bring them to Latino Lunas. They want to learn some shit, bring them to Team Help Tuesday. Want to learn some more shit, bring them to Team Help Thursday. If, if, if they like building wealth and they want to be at this seminar, invite them to this seminar, right? This one's a little bit more high level. I talk about EXP, so it's kind of a different thing. I don't think you should bring somebody necessarily the first time that you meet them. He's different. He'd heard about the model. I don't want to go EXPing on somebody, <laughs> right? So that's a new term you guys just learned, okay? So build great relationships first. Remember their story. Just do the same thing you do with a client. When I tell you to do a buyer's consultation, the first thing I ask you, hey, before we get started, what's your story? Like, how'd you even get into real estate? And then shut up. Shut up and then ask more questions. Oh, you're from Tennessee? What part? Oh, Nashville. Oh, that's awesome. We got Nashville a couple times. You a big country person? Hey, this is not, uh, who's your favorite singer? But we just, I'm, I, can, I can go down a rabbit hole on anything that they're doing and I want to spend as much time getting to know them as possible. Guess what? You know, by me doing that, I find out there's a country concert, free country concert going on at, uh, uh, Dr. Phillips or something and be like, hey, I'm going next week. You want to go with me? I thought about you. But would you have known to think about that if you hadn't gotten the story? Did you even know that they like that kind of stuff? This is how you attract agents. Ask great questions. What are your goals for 2021? If you're talking to a high level person, what's your exit strategy for real estate? I'm curious. You're, you're a high level guy. You have your own independent brokerage. Like what's your, what's the exit strategy? Like what's, what's 10 years from now look like? Guess what? Most of them have zero answer for that. They have no answer. They don't know what their exit strategy is. Oh, I guess, you know, get more, recruit more agents. Okay. That's awesome, man. I mean, how many of you recruit? Oh, dude, it sounds like you're great at recruiting. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I can show them a model that will supercharge. Some people say that I'm actually a great recruit. I'm great. I love recruit. Some people, I meet people. They're like, I love recruiting. We got a guy in Nevada, which happens to be named Chris Nevada. is one of our partners over there. He's in our, he's in our uh, front line. He actually changed his name to Nevada because he went and he had the no-main Nevada real estate team. He went to the um, whatever, the county, whatever, or whatever, whatever their association is like, hey, in the state of Nevada, you cannot use the name Nevada for your real estate team because it's, it's the name of the state. Like, we don't allow it. And then as he walked out the room, they said, I mean, you could always change your name to Nevada. He said, change his name to Nevada. Nevada real estate team, number one of the number one teams in the country. 
used to be with KW, now he's with us. But he was an ex-Navy recruiter. When we told him about the opera, he's like, I literally, I remember being on the call. He's like, you don't have to explain this to me, man. I used to be a Navy recruiter and I loved it. I love recruiting, right? You're going to meet people like that, okay? Find a way to help or invite them. Alliancecalendar.com. If you don't know where our classes are, you should be attending them. You should be inviting people. Hey, if you ever want to come to class, let me know. Here's the link, alliancecalendar.com. Come to one of our classes, okay? And then leverage your mentors, right? You might not know how to do this, this, like that. I've been doing a lot of reps, right? You need to do the reps too, but and until you get the reps, you need to leverage your upline. Brittany Pride, Dan Rojas, whoever it is, Bobby Davidowitz, whoever it is, hey, leverage your people, right? Hey, you know what? You need to meet with such and such. If you don't feel comfortable explaining or you don't feel comfortable with whatever, when you build a relationship, but I ask that you build a relationship first, right? It's to the point where you get to the point where they need to understand the value proposition. Not just about the XP, we can talk about that, but honestly with the Alliance Group. You know, I was telling him, I was like, look, you can get EXP anywhere. That's not really the value. That it's a platform and it's the most brilliant one. But after that, what did we build on top of that platform? Like you guys are going to build a great real estate team, right? You guys are going to crush it in real estate. You're going to have so much success that people are just going to want to be a part of your aura. Like freaking Tia, she doesn't even try recruiting. People just hear about her. And they said, Brittany Pride came from Tia Billis. She wasn't even trying. Brittany Pride sought her out because of her success, right? You can build your own brand. You guys have your own logo and brand, right? What's it called? Real Estate Mojo. Build your own brand. Real Estate Mojo. Add value. Add a new value that I can't add, right? I'm not, I don't got a twin. I can't add that kind of value. You know what I'm saying? So add something that people will be attracted to that's even in addition to what the Alliance does. That's what Pride is doing. That's what Power Team is doing, okay? I keep pressing this thing like it's going to work. I ain't going to fucking work. It's like, I'll give it a shot again. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to let you know I've put a couple of videos. If you don't know some of the videos that you can send to people or watch yourself, go to jointdp.com backslash agent attraction. I put a, uh, there's a seven minute, uh, exp I know some of these like explain videos are really long. So I, I found this one for seven minutes, right? So if you got short attention span people, they just want to learn the model. There's a seven minute EXP explain. I've got, I've got that revenue share calculator one that you just heard from Brent Gove. Okay. I've got, a podcast that I did actually with Ryan Plaza of Home First Lending a while back where I kind of talk about more like the broad opportunity of it. And it's more of a story. So maybe, you know, maybe you watch that. If you think it's valuable to send it to somebody, send it. And then you'll see another video there called The Model Explained, which is like Brent Gove, probably about 30, 45 minute explanation of the EXP model by Brent Gove. And he's a great storyteller, as you kind of heard through that revenue share calculator video. And if you ever want to learn just how the model works and you need have more questions, just go to explore.exprealty.com so that you guys have that. Some of you guys ask me, um, well, how do, I, how do I have people sign up under me? When they're ready, how do I have them sign up? Some of you guys don't even know this. You have a website that's your first, your last name, .exprealty.careers. Okay? Your first and last name, .exprealty.careers. It's your site. Now, they could, they could just do, um, there's one called join.exprealty.careers. It's a general one. As long as they name you as a sponsor, you're fine. But I like this one because it lets you know when somebody fills out the application, it has your name on it. And it says, it'll say join or apply now. It'll say apply now. And you click there and it'll take you step by step through the process of joining up with EXP. I usually send them something like this. You just uh, so they know what to expect, you'll begin by filling out your independent contractor agreement. Uh, Robert DeVito, it's me, will be your sponsor. Just a reminder, I've had this happen before where somebody goes in there and they thought, oh, I thought I was supposed to put Gil. Like, no, you're not supposed to you put me, right? Because it's re once somebody picks a sponsor, it's really hard to change. If it's a mistake, you can call them immediately, be like, hey, they screwed up. That's not what was supposed to happen. But once somebody picks a sponsor, it's done, okay? So make sure they know that they got to put your name in there, right, as the sponsor. And there'll be a video there that makes it very clear that how important it is to like know who your sponsor is and, and, and all that, okay? And then I usually give them this little paragraph here saying, hey, you know, letting them know there's a one-time 149 application fee that it includes a thousand free business cards. I talk a little bit about KB, just something simple. I don't have to go through the whole explanation of the application, but 
the best thing to do, to be quite honest with you, to make sure that people sign up correctly is just bring them in and do it right next to them. Okay? You do it with them. You do not want to leave this to chance. Or if you need somebody to help you with it, Marissa will be up there or Celeste and they'll help them. Okay? That's why we bought an extra computer just for people to register here because some people just didn't bring their laptop or whatever the case may be. Okay, but this is what I send them just so they know. Um, so here's your wealth plan. EXP stock, build res residual income with rev share. This is overtime. This is a long game plan. We're going to buy real estate and hold real estate as we come across deals and different things. We're going to be looking and researching a diversified investment account. And, and then I put other. You should be looking at other investments. You're going to come across things that might be amazing investments. And you're, going to want, and you're going to do your research and you might invest in those things and make some money. I've got some money in some cryptocurrency too, right? I had some FOMO um, you know, a couple of years back where I was like, everybody's jumping in on crypto. I feel like I have to put some money into it. And guess what? It dropped. I didn't, I know, I knew just a little bit about it, it dropped like crazy, but I held on because I said, this is the long game. Now it's back. Now I've tripled my money in two years. So I waited, it dropped from 34 cents a share to like two cents a share, right? Now, if I was really smart and I, the only reason I didn't buy more at that point, because when a stock goes down, it's not time to sell. If you think that stock is good, you buy more when it gets cheap. Right. I didn't because I don't know enough about crypto to do that, but I just left my money in there and now it's tripled. It took two years to do, but I don't know anybody tripling their shit, you know, 300 percent returns in three in two years ain't bad. Right. So you're going to be looking for other investments as well. So I just want to reiterate the term long game and I want you to think long game about everything now, not just getting wealthy. Right. Just even about your real estate career. Don't worry, you guys are so caught up in the ups and downs of the game. Think about the experience you're getting. Think about the situations you're getting into, the deals that you're doing. Think about what you're learning. Think about the people you're connecting with and the connections that you're making and think long game. People say, Bobby, you're so, you're so patient. You know, I'm like, dude, I'm just thinking way past this. Like, in other words, I'll give you a perfect example, a real estate deal. If you're in a real estate deal, a lot of times it gets messy. And a lot of times you got an agent on the other side who's a pain in the ass or, or arrogant. I'm sure it sounds like you've dealt with one. We're all going to deal with them, right? Why don't I start fights with those people? Why, why, don't I, why do I play cool and I maneuver in the background and make sure I position them and leverage them the way I want to? Because my eye is on the check and the check is down there. It's the long game. If I start a pissing match with somebody who's got their hand on their check, all I'm doing is fucking up my check. So they say, Bobby, you're so patient. I'm like, no, I'm actually really selfish. That check is important to me and I will not be willing to sacrifice it on a short-term ego battle. I won't sacrifice it because I need that check, <laughs> right? That's long game thinking. I'm telling you right now, think about that way with everything. It's the one thing people aren't willing to do. They won't do it. That's why I'm not gonna become wealthy because they won't do it. So keep your mind on the long game at all times. And remember this, it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. It takes 10 years to be an overnight success. Every person you've seen that you think came out of nowhere didn't come out of nowhere. You just haven't seen the, the previous 10 years. And it was ugly back then. It was ugly year one. It might've been ugly year five, right? Drake didn't come out of nowhere. Right? Did it overnight, couldn't happen any quicker. No, you fucking didn't. You were on a fuck, you were an actor. Some show called Degrassi or whatever it was. He was wheelchair, well, he was a wheelchair Jimmy and a show. No, no, sorry, it didn't happen overnight. Okay? They worked at it. All right? Any questions? All right, go become wealthy. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, 359.